Good morning. Uh, good morning from the agave fields around TTAP. So yes, I'm back here in Jalisco. Uh, my flight was supposed to get in at 11.30 p.m. I got in at 6.30 a.m. instead, so I am beat. Um, my brain is not technically all working yet, <laughs> but we're gonna try some tequila. Um, I'm here with Doug from the Agave Social Club. He's speaking a single barrel with Cascanes, and I came to crash his party, really. Get a lot of content too, to see uh, other things that Cascanes is doing, which is a brand that I really like because they're always innovating, thinking outside the box, so that's really cool. Um, per usual, I'm not really sure exactly what we're gonna do. I know that today we're here. Uh, Doug is getting some content with Don Chico. I'm getting some content at the distillery as well. And then I think we're gonna go to an agave field. We're gonna see the cooperage as well, where they get their barrels, which is a huge part of Cascanes. So it's gonna be an awesome trip. We're here two days, to today and tomorrow. It's gonna be all one vlog. So follow along and uh, let's try some tequila. You guys are gonna get a real like behind the scenes of how the agave social club works. <laughs> So Doug got all the interview with Don Chico, uh, which is really cool. Now we're gonna head over to the barrel room here at T-Tap uh, that holds not just Cascanas, but all the other brands that T-Tap makes as well. I have been here before and it's a pretty awesome space. So let's go check out the barrel room. And I think Doug is still getting more content. Um, I'm here, you know, hanging out, uh, getting a lot of content for me. Doug is here working and getting content to tell the story of Cascanas. <laughs> So this is the barrel room here at T-Tap. Um, this is not just what Cascan is, right? T-Tap produces for a lot of different brands. So uh, Cascan has their own area, but I just I love, love walking around these barrels. Yeah, it's just so much tequila here. And I wish I could like, I don't know, <laughs> transfer smell over video. Cause it just, you kind of get just that like alcohol and wood and wine and whiskey, all kind of like, you know, you can even see it seeping out right here. Get all that smell in the air. I love barrel rooms because of that. So Doug is not only telling the story of Cascanes in here, he's picking a single barrel, like I said. So they're pulling out a bunch of samples of all of the whole of barrels that Cascanes has with their single barrels. And hopefully we had a try uh, and see what Doug picks, which is awesome. Let's go check out. And actually, so for you to be able to pull out samples from this barrel, um, it's not that simple. Like I think with whiskey, you can just kind of make a hole and get it. For tequila, you need to have permission by the CRT. So you either need to get permission by the CRT, certain barrels to be open, or a CRT person needs to be here with you for you to open that barrel. So they have permission from the CRT to get certain barrels. So that's what they're doing right now. So this whole wall behind me here, from here all the way to the wall, uh, this is all Cascanes barrels. Uh, you can see some single barrels. So see, this is a single barrel right here for somebody. This is another single barrel here for somebody. They were telling me that Cascanes has around 700 barrels here that are aging. It's a lot of tequila. Oh. So before we try all the single barrels that Doug is gonna choose, we're gonna see the distillery. And if you've seen the videos, you know that I've been here before, but there's some new additions to the distillery that we wanna see. Uh, there's a copper still, they're building out a whole new area. So we're gonna go check out the distillery first, and then we're gonna go try some tequila. So welcome to T-Tap and Cascanes Distillery. It smells incredible in here. I wish, again, I could show you guys smell over the video. Just that cooked agave smell. It's one of my favorite smells in the world. Uh, yeah, we're gonna check out. and I'll show you guys a little bit too. I don't know if you've seen uh, this distillery. So first things first, right? We have the oven right here, that's the Orno. And then we have the two autoclaves right here. Cascanes uses both of that. And then after all that's cooked, 
and rested. And then comes the milling process. And there's also two kinds here. So there's this new taona that's here right now. Um, and then the other side of me right now, that's the roller mill, which is what uh, Cascanes uses now. After that comes fermentation, which is those big ass tanks back there. And after that comes this distillation, which are these stills in stainless steel. But the new addition now is some copper stills that I'm super excited to see. This is the new addition to T-Tap. And there are three new stills that are copper stills that are some of the prettiest stills I've ever seen. Check this out. So this new copper stills here are actually copper from Brazil, which as a Brazilian was pretty awesome to see. And they were just one of the prettiest stills I've ever seen, like I said before. They had this little mini column still as well. So the time has come uh, where the Agave Social Club <laughs> gonna pick a barrel and I'm just gonna try them all and hope he picks the best one <laughs> so we're starting with these two right here <laughs> I'll put that on the video <laughs> wait you recording? <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it tastes like a lot of Ooh. flavor mm -hmm. oh man I gave me goosebumps so <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> one and done, first one. <laughs> yeah. This is eight. Yeah. Jeez. That is. Dude, this is higher than 50? That's really good. Look, look at this color here. Absolutely beautiful. Like, 54 like compounds. Okay, so eight was incredible. Yeah. Um, so now we're on to you know, seven. We're just working our way down. Mm -hmm. I got like to A, B, M to like go in between them. Back, uh huh. Just do it back and forth kind of thing. Are you on the second or third one? I'm the second one. Okay. Are you on the second one too? Yeah. This is a lower ABV, right? I was gonna say, to me, it's softer. Yeah. yeah, a lot softer. But the goal is to you know enjoy this and to go, hey, what's something that you you would really go, man? I would love to to sip on this. Mm -hmm. and, and there's not a bad pick here. Yeah. If you like it as an añejo, like right now, I can pull it out and put it in a tank and wait mm -hmm. for the for the labels. Oh, Cascades añejo. Which one are you doing? Torch. Um, That's six. I mean, like, I wouldn't say this publicly, but anything in the Cristalino range? <laughs> so you hang out with uh, Doug Price and you got to carry all his gear. <laughs> oh, you have to carry all my gear. All right, guys. So Doug picked his barrel. It was an awesome experience. All incredible barrels. We tried eight barrels at Jesus. Man, it was awesome but doug picked his uh now we're gonna go eat so i was so hungry and sleep deprived that i uh i didn't film most of the food but this is what we ate <laughs> this is the aftermath but now we are at the basically the cooperage that cascanes uses and it's this little uh door right here where they char the barrels that they're gonna use and uh, we're here with them and we're gonna see them charring the barrels take some pictures seeing the whole process you know from making a tequila to what goes into aging the tequila as well, which Cascan is, is very famous for. So let's go see that. So his name is Joel, and he's been doing this for 35 years, picking, working with different brands and charring the barrels to a level that each brand wants to. So today we're gonna see him do one for Cascanes. So let's go check this out. So you saw them shaving it with the machine, getting all dirty, getting all that like old char that was in that barrel. Now they're recharring the barrel and you can hear the flames behind me right here. If, uh, yeah, let me show you what this fire looks like. Cascanes does this to pretty much every single barrel they use. Just the level of char is what differentiates the tequila. So I was just talking to Edwin and he was saying, depending if you want more bourbon notes or if you're not getting a lot of bourbon notes in that barrel, then they do a heavy char. So they play around with what char they want and what notes they want. But this happens to almost every single barrel that Cascanes does. And it's crazy to just see the work that goes behind 
making the tequila. We just, you know, open the bottle, pour it out, drink it, and then get to judge it. And we forgot about all the hands that help make that tequila, from the fields to charring to distilling. And it's one of my favorite things to learn. Now, I think we're heading back to Guadalajara to have some dinner. Not gonna lie to you guys, I am beat. I am so tired. Uh, I took like a 10 minute nap as Doug was filming and the guy was like cleaning the barrels and stuff. And I feel a little bit energized, but I'm so tired. I haven't slept all day. I'm hoping there's traffic <laughs> so I can take a nap. So I'll see you guys in Guadalajara. Morning. So yesterday was really, really cool. We just hung out for a little bit, smoked a cigar, uh, like you guys saw, and then I just came home and just crashed. Now it's the morning, it's 9.30. Uh, today the plan is to go to the agave fields and to also go to the jungle, where uh, Colin, who's the owner of Cascanes, learned how to make tequila, which is a story that I've heard so many times, which is gonna be really cool to actually go there and visit and see it. But first, as you do whenever there's a lot of uh, tastings involved, let's go get some food. So we are at the entrance of the little town where Cascanes was originated essentially, right? So the story goes that Jose and uh, Colin, who are both with the brand today, were looking for somewhere that was making good tequila. And they were eating at a taco stand, talking to the guy that was at the taco stand. The guy said, I know somebody, and put him in contact with Humberto, who we're gonna see now. And Colin spent about six months there learning how to make tequila in that way. And it's pretty much moonshine. It's like mezcal, but in tequila region. So we're gonna go check it out. So we're here at Umberto's Distillery. You know, I don't even know if you call it a palenque or a vinata. I love that, you know, you come in and there's just like layers of agave fibers on the floor. They have this little tiny autoclave here that I haven't seen. And again, this is like going to a palenque and I never seen a palenque with uh, autoclave, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this agave azul? Is agave azul? Si. Nomás trabajo con el azul o trabajo con otros agaves también? Aquí está puro azul. Puro azul. Gracias. Mm. Oh man. This is crazy. So sweet. This is like the mini autoclave behind me right here. They're unloading the cooked agave going into the pickup truck. Let me show you the autoclave. It's super interesting. I've never seen something like this. This is like a wood fire oven where they put the firewood in there. And then on top of that is a steamer. The steamer goes up and starts cooking in this little tiny autoclave. And he built all this himself. All this engineering that went, you know, into making all this, made this all himself. Then they unload the autoclaves here, goes into the back of a pickup truck where this guy right here starts chopping it up. After the chopping comes the milling and a very uh, unique way that they make it here that I've been hearing for the last three years is that they use a Chevy engine to shred the agave. The agave's got put over there, it shreds into here. It all hits the wall that you see right here. hits the wall, they get the agave fibers, put it into that stainless steel tank that you see right there. And then in that stainless steel tank is where they add water, they squeeze out all the fibers, get all the juice out of the fibers. And then from there, goes into this fermentation tank right here. So it's fermented in plastic. And after that's fermented for a few days, it goes into this steel right here as well, that it's stainless steel. Um, but this is the steel that they have right here. They have a blower that's slowly blowing the air into the firewood to create fire. It comes out as tequila down here. Or not tequila, right? At the Silado de Agave. Uh, look, I love distilleries and I love nice stuff and I love the beautiful big places that we go to. But sitting in the back of a pickup truck in the middle of a ranchito, having a little tequila in La Taverna, that's my weak spot right there. Este ya es distilado de agave. So that was just special. Mm -hmm. 
now in this town called Estancita, there was once a distillery from Sauza and there's ruins of that distillery today here. And we're gonna go check that out. So we're here in the ruins of the old distillery from Sauza and it's like a whole full circle moment. So you see the walls behind me here for the uh, distillery. There's a chimney right there. But today, uh, they're growing agave in what used to be the distillery. And that's, that's so cool. It's like, again, a full circle moment, you know? So Humberto also told us that there's a Tawana pit here. So he's taking us over to see the, the Tawana pit. So this is a Tawana pit that was here when the Sousa factory was still working. And Humberto's dad used to make tequila here in this space as well. We also got to see this oven that was here. They said that this was about a 12 ton oven. An interesting thing too in this region, like because they're so regional, what they call different process or different things revolving around agave spirits. So like, you know, in Michoacan, it's a vinata. In Oaxaca, it's a palenque. Here, it's a taverna. And the agave, actually, if you're using it to cook and to make mezcal, you actually say that you call the plant a mezcal. So, you know, he was asking, he's like, oh, probably mezcal. And he was pointing it to, to the um to the oven and i was like oh there you're making mezcal here too and then i got it. i was like oh no of course he's talking about the agave um so which is really cool too so all of this mezcal here behind me uh that's where he land starts so, so he's the one that's actually planting the mezcal for using in his taverna and what used to be a salsa distillery that his dad used to work at so right now we're in the agave fields doug is getting some content with the himadores here that are doing the hima uh, for Cascanes, just to make sure we get some cool shots of all that too. Doug's gonna be doing a lot of that where he's gonna be doing voiceover, you know, uh, which is really cool. I think that's one of the reasons why me and Doug get along so well is that we both do content, but we both have our very unique styles. There's no competition at all, which is awesome. Um, but anyway, so he's doing his thing. I'm walking around taking pictures. Uh, we're gonna send a drone up. So so here really just a little stop for us to get some content and film the Himadores. So I guess right now just gonna be a montage of Himador uh, video. This is what happens when you uh, travel around with podcasters. They drink tequila and champagne flutes inside the car. Uh, and I just drink it in the little garrafones. <laughs> While driving through a garbage fields. <laughs>